Thanks for watching CMTV. We know you'll be blessed by this week's message. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Visit cmjacksboro.com for more information about our church and ways you can get involved. Thanks for joining us and welcome home. Well, how's everybody doing this morning? When is God good? Yeah, well, don't get tired of hearing that because you're going to hear it a lot from me today, too. A few months back, I talked to Dad, and, and uh, y'all have seen me over the past year really uh, uh, get to come up here and, and uh, just get to share uh, small testimonies, get to share the goodness of God. Well, <laughs> something came on my heart, and uh, I told Dad about it, and he said, well, yeah, you need to share it. And I said, well, I don't think five minutes is enough. He said, well, good. You just preached the whole sermon. Uh, what? But uh, I tell you what, praise God. Praise God, because it's something that uh, God's put a passion on my heart to do. And I'm taking a step of faith today and doing my first sermon. <laughs> it's so awesome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like that. Thank you so much. All right. Uh, a little bit of a backstory about myself. i, I got to build it up just so you understand where I'm going with this. Um, I graduated from Jacksboro High School. Uh, and I went to Midwestern to go ahead and, and, and play football, uh, as most of you all know. Uh, very quickly, I realized that's not the place for me. Very quickly. Um, I didn't complain. I didn't, I didn't cry. I didn't come home. Just quit. I prayed and I said, God, what would you have me do? Where do you want me to go? I sought after the Lord first. And I heard very clearly, go to tech. Go to tech. So I said, okay. God opened the door. And I got there. Man, it's such a neat story. I went on a visit on a Friday, I was enrolled on a Monday, the next Monday. I mean, God took care of me. But I trusted and I obeyed. Well, during that time, God really blessed me. For y'all that, that don't know, uh, I competed for tech in track and field. Uh, I was a several-time All-American. God really blessed me. But what he also did is he gave me two coaches ahead of me, my head coach and then my throws coach. Very, very godly men, very dedicated. They filled me up with the Word, Right? They were mentors to me, not only in my physical walk, but also in my spiritual walk. They had a passion, and I built off of that. It was such a blessing. Well, each one of us, God gives us gifts, abilities, right? Imagine this gifts and abilities, right? Something nicer than a pencil, but you, you understand the point, right? He gives us those gifts and abilities, and we always, at first, wow, God, Thank you. Thank you for this. This is so exciting. This is so awesome. We go out and look what God gave us, right? Look what God gave us. Well, when I was at Tech, I was walking in that truth. I was dedicating those gifts, those abilities to Him. But then something happened about my junior year. And I remember when it happened because my mom confronted me about it. Pride entered. No longer was it, look what God gave me. Look what God gave me. Thank you, God. It was, look what I made. I made this. I was not giving God the glory. I took what he gave me, and I took credit for it. I said, this is mine. I made it. I don't need you. I know that sounds harsh, but that's what you do. That's what you do when you give in to pride. Well, you know what happens when pride enters? Pull up Proverbs 16, 18, please. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. All right, now go to Proverbs 18, 12. Before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty, and before honor is humility. I was walking in humility, giving God the glory, and continually thanking Him for building those gifts, those abilities within me to glorify Him. But then what did I do? I started taking credit for it, saying it's mine. It's mine. It's not yours. It's mine. You see what happens? I took it, and I took it from me, and I did it with my own strength, and it started to bend. Let me use two hands. Finally, something broke within me. I call this part of the sermon, chapter 2. Because of my pride, 
I started to be tormented. It allowed a spirit of fear to sit there and feed lies to me. Tell me I'm not good enough. I don't deserve it. I don't deserve God's goodness. Because of what I've done in my past. Because of what I did. Because of my pride. Because I didn't trust God. And I took in my own strength. Guys, you've all had these feelings. Feelings of guilt. Feelings of shame. Feeling like you're not good enough. You're not worthy. Well, guys, now you all understand the feeling that I was in at that point in my life. I was a junior at that point. This is my junior year. For three years, I tried to fix, I tried to fix it in my own strength. I continued to say, I can fix it. I can fix it. I can fix it. This is a lot harder than it looks, guys. There we go. Perfect, right? Just like before. No. Why? Why? Because of my pride, because of my guilt, my shame. I didn't feel like I could go to God and say, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I broke what was yours. That's a hard feeling, guys. That's a hard feeling. For three years, three years, I had to deal with that, that feeling of shame and that torment. For three years. Do y'all not know who my parents are? <laughs> Long story short, I got a job in Jacksboro. I moved back. And shortly after, we had a family meeting. Oh, man, if you know my family, you do not want family meetings. <laughs> they brought us all boys in. We're in town at the time. Oh, when is God good? And we had a family meeting. And my parents said, just like Mom had, had spoke earlier, she had been praying for us because she knew that there were, was something out there. Something tormenting us, right? They locked us in a room and they said, You're not leaving until we take authority over it and cast it out. And they prayed over me. And as they prayed over me, I was able to lay down my embarrassment, my pride, my shame. And the Holy Spirit pulled on me and said, Let it go. Let it go. As I let it go, as I shared, what I was feeling. My parents were able to take authority over that spirit of fear, that spirit of death that tormented me. They took authority over it in Jesus' name and it left. Amen? Amen? And it left. You have that authority. Now let me show you. Oh, but first I want to tell you, before I get to that, I'm, I'm getting a little excited. I'm getting a little excited because I've got a lot to share. But in that moment, after I was delivered, <laughs> my parents came up and tried to talk to me. I don't remember what it was about. I said, you know what? Can I just have a second? Can I just have a second? Because finally in my, in my soul, in my spirit, I felt peace for the first time in three years. John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you, give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. I struggled with fear. But in that moment, when I finally felt that spirit of fear finally leave me, I felt that peace. And I understood that peace that Jesus left with us. All right. Uh, pull up Luke. 4, 16 through 21, please. Perfect. Man, you are quick. Thank you. So what happened, right? Because of my pride, I allowed the enemy to come in and torment me, to steal from me. Guys, I still had a good athletic career, but I'm talking about my soul. Those giftings, those callings, it held me back. When I was at Tech, I had a gift to be able to speak. 
to other people. I had an ability to speak and, and, and teach, right? I started to coach young kids when I was out there, and I had a gift. I was able to communicate to them in a way that they can understand. Well, in the same way, he gave me a gift to be able to share the good word, the goodness of God. But because of my shame, because I felt like I was not good enough, I didn't know enough. If anyone knew, so I hid it away. And for three years, I was held back in those gifts and those callings. I know he opened doors when I was in college to be able to do more, to be able to share more. But I didn't because of my fear. So what happened? That pride, I finally had to repent of that pride. I did. I said, God, I am so sorry. Just like I showed you, I am so sorry. After that, we took authority against that spirit of fear. We cast it out. Now, Luke chapter 4, 16, 21. So he came to Nazareth. This is right after he's been tempted, right? This is right after uh, Satan has tempted him. He's coming down from the mountain. He goes back to Nazareth, where he's from. So he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. This is Jesus, by the way. And he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to, pro to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Then He closed the book and He gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all were in the synagogue, were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. What he was saying is, Here I am. Let's get to work. I'm here to deliver you. Amen? Amen. Now tell me this. If Jesus stood right here in front of you and you said that, would you accept it and realize that that pride, that fear, he can handle it. He can handle it. You're not too low for God. You saw the list. You saw the list. Heal the brokenhearted. We've all had broken hearts at one point in one way. Goodness of God is here for you for that. To, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of the sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. He brought that, he brought that for us. Now, Matthew 28, 18 through 20. That authority I was telling you about. You've heard it said several times by our parents, but you're hearing it in my perspective. And this is a, 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 a verse that they've used several times. But you're getting to hear my story. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them. This is right after he was raised up. And he, he revealed himself back to his disciples, right? And as he's about to be ascended up into heaven again, he tells them, and Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to, to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I have commanded you, and, lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. He came to bring that authority. What authority he had. If you ever go read the New Testament, you read his... All the, the amazing things he did. He cast out demons. He, he healed the blind. Healed the brokenhearted. But everywhere he went, people always said, how does this man have such authority? Because he was the Christ. But just like there in Matthew that I just read, he brought all authority and power with him. And now he says, here. Here it is. Here it is for you. Use it. If you don't know how to use it, go find somebody that does and let them teach you. So, what did we do? I had to repent of that pride. And then God was able to deliver me. We were able to take authority over that spirit of fear that had been tormenting me for three years. I felt, finally found the peace. What's the next step? What do you think happened then? What do you think happened then? Humility. I gave God back that pencil. Said, God, I'm dedicating 
my gifts, my talents, what you already gave me. I know it don't look like much, and I know I've abused it, but I'm giving it back to you. Use me, please. Use me. Not long after that, I took a step of faith. One week, uh, Dad was going to be gone, and, and uh, he felt like the Holy Spirit told him, Call Cole. Make him get up there and, and do a testimony. Make him speak in front of people. Little did he know that, that one of the most terrifying things for me was a fear of public speaking. Oh, I knew it. No, okay. <laughs> yeah. Now he admits it. He kind of gave me that, what? When he got back and I told him that, but yeah. But anyways, he knew it. But that spirit of fear, I knew I had authority against. And when those, those feelings of fear and terror, right? What if I mess up? The fear of man. What if I'm judged? I took authority against it in the name of Jesus. I said, you leave. Do not have a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and sound mind. I stepped up here in faith. Now a year later, <laughs> preaching my first sermon in front of people that have seen me grow up right here in this town. What a blessing. What a blessing. But what is that? That's the goodness of God. Amen. I got one amen it's from the preacher back here. <laughs> yes. But I had to humble myself and give those gifts back to God. But he also gave me a bonus. I told you I have an ability to teach. He gave that to me. Last year, I was asked to help, uh, help out. I had a few kids that, that asked me to help uh, train them, shot discus. Well, because of that humility and because I finally dedicated those gifts back to God, I always stayed humble. And as I would go help them, I would say, God, please, give me the wisdom. Give me the words. Give me the knowledge on how to help these young kids. And in doing that, in staying humble and realizing that if I would first go to the Father and say, Lord, use me as you see. Please, use me as you see these kids need. Not only did I get a chance to be able to minister to them. Did you know I always play praise and worship music when I'm out there with them? But also, I got to train five young boys. Five. Last year made it to state. What a blessing. Amen. What a blessing. But I tell you, it's because I humbled myself and I said, God, you're so much bigger than me. And as long as I continue to trust in him, as long as I continue to trust in him and allow him to use those gifts, those abilities within me, just like you, if you will allow him to use those abilities, not only will he bless you, but he will bless other people. Not only by seeking Him first that I bless myself and able to, to, to be able to do that. That is such a great moment for me. I, I am so proud of the kids, but also it's a blessing to me that my hard work, that my passion, that I'm good at, right? That's kind of cool. But not only that, think about that. Five young boys. Five. What about their families? The thrill, right? The excitement. I allowed God to, I allowed God not only to bless me, but by blessing me and using those gifts for Him, He was able to bless five other families. You see? And each one of us can do that. Each one of us can do that. And that is so neat. That is so neat. But the reason I pulled out that pencil and I showed you that, I gave you this broke, I gave God back this broken pencil because I didn't feel like there was much there. But you know what He did? He wasn't mad. He didn't discipline me. He wasn't mad because I finally said, I'm going to trust in you. Not only did he fix that pencil. But he's made it bigger and brighter. Now that passion within me has grown as well. You know why? Because when is God good? And he is continuously, continuously over this year. Continuously. Shown me the goodness of God. Now, 
That was chapter 4. <laughs> chapter 5. I'm just going to summarize what we just went through, okay? Let's see if this actually works. Oh, it does. It's got five different colors, guys. This is cool. This is cool. All right. So what did I do? When I moved back home, I had to repent of that pride. I realized that I was trying to do things in my own strength, right? When I repented of that pride, then we took authority against that spirit of fear. You have that same authority. Jesus left that with you. That fear left me. Then I humbled myself. I gave God back what He made. He made me. I gave Him back those gifts, those abilities. And I allowed Him to use them to glorify not only Him, but He was able to use me to help bless other people. Like I said, praise and worship music. You know what me and Cade still say to this day when we go out and we throw and we have a good day? Or we have a good throw? Praise God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Okay, that was chapter 5. This all happened because I took what I'd like to call a leap of faith. That's your cue, Micah. I think she was as excited as I am. Uh, stand over there. I'm going to get to you in a second. We're, we'll do the other one. Okay, that was chapter 5. Are you going to lead the people in the prayer to do what you did? Do you want to? What? No, I'm asking if you're going to. If you're not, I want to come alongside you and let's do that before you okay. move any further. Okay. You just summarize stuff. and So we need to give all of them the same chance that you had. Okay. Okay. How many of you are dealing with fear? How many of you are dealing with that pride? How many? Don't, this is the time. Stand. If you're dealing with that fear, with that pride, just like Cole was. Anybody that's sitting down, you're not being honest because the book of James, he says, where envy and self-seeking exist, there's confusion in every evil work present. He said, don't boast and lie against the truth. And the reason he says that is because it's in everybody. It's in humanity. So, Father, by the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we come before you, and as each and every person here stands, by an act of their will, they are confessing that they are allowing fear to torment them, and they're allowing pride to direct their steps. And so now, Father, we recognize, we resist, we renounce, and we separate ourselves from that pride and from that fear. And Father, we ask that you pour your humility out upon us right now. If each and every one of y'all would please say this prayer with me. Father, Father I, confess to you, I confess to you, I have been tormented by fear. You said there is no fear in perfect love. Because your perfect love cast out all fear. Father, pour your perfect love out upon me. And dry all fear out of me. Father, you said you resist the proud. But you give grace to the humble. Father, I am standing before you now. Humbling myself before each and every person here. And I'm saying, Father, deliver me of that pride. I receive you. And everything that you did for me. Fear. Be gone. In Jesus' name. Pride, be gone. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, fill me from top to bottom. Illuminate and drive out all darkness within me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Y'all be seated. Is this thing on still? Okay, good. Isn't it nice when you have a minister as a father? He can still help me even up here today, right? Yeah. Amen. It's the same way God is to us. He is our Heavenly Father. He'll be there for you. Now, that was chapter 5. Now, let me read chapter 2.5. Sometimes you got to go back to go forward. All of this took place over the past 21 months. 
And it's such a blessing because 21 months ago, how I felt on the inside, I was, I was broken and, and I never felt like anything like this would have, would have been possible. But I had just quit my job to train for the Olympics. Spoiler alert, I didn't make the Olympics. So after, so after that, I, didn't, I was lost. I didn't know what to do, where to go. So I prayed and I said, God, I don't know what to do. Where do you want me? Where do I go? They said, I want you to move back to Jacksboro. I said, why, God? I'm trying to be, I, I'm trying to be this Olympic star. I'm, I'm, trying to, I'm, I'm trying to throw, you know. I'm, I'm trying to do this professionally. He said, I want you to take that job back to Jacksboro. And he says, I promise you, three things will occur if you will take that leap of faith. This was 21 months ago when God revealed this to me. He said, one, I'm going to heal you. I'm going to deliver you from that fear, that shame. Just as you heard, he did. Praise God, he did. Two, I'm going to restore those gifts within you. I'm going to restore them. And I'm going to bring you in another level of my faith. Another level in, in my faith, right? I was broken. I was. I was so broken. But now, the goodness of God, my goodness, guys. I've came into another level of my faith as I stand up here today and take a leap of faith. Amen. Preaching to y'all, I've taken a leap of faith. And third and finally, God told me that if I would move back and trust Him and take that leap of faith, just as you saw Micah do, that I'd find a wife. So Micah, this is me trusting and obeying and taking a leap of faith and saying, Micah, Guys, when is God good? <laughs> I got it, I got it. God told me several months back she was the one for me. And I've known it. But I prayed. I said, when should I do it? And he put my birthday on my heart. What a birthday present, huh? But I went and bought a ring that day, and I've had to hide that ring and hold that secret in for so long. It's so good to let out. It really is. Sorry you had to wait, babe, but I had to trust and obey. But guys, that's what I wanted to show you today. It's God is good all the time. Take that leap of faith today and say, God, I give it back to you. Use me as you see fit. And he will bless you. I know she's a little thing, but my goodness, that's a huge blessing. So thank you guys for allowing me to share that with you. Because I wanted you to see the goodness of God through my eyes and through my story. Thanks again for watching CMTV. We hope you enjoyed this week's message. If you would like to give a love offering or partner with us financially, visit cmjacksboro.com give. Thanks again for watching and welcome home.